Jesus. Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Derber with my wonderful, beautiful oh boy. wife of my life, Alberta Derber. And we are just oh delighted to be able to share with you the truths of God's Word once again. Luke 1, 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Mm -hmm. March 3rd. Wonderful Wednesday. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful today, of course. Yeah. Well, it's a wonderful, wonderful life, full of wonders. It is. It's just, it's really just getting better. You know, it's amazing. I'm just, it's amazing. I'm just feeling new resurrection life power. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've gone through tremendous, I think the last couple of years have been um, all the exposing but it's been so wonderful, you know, because God's doing a new thing in 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 our country, in the people of God, in the world. Mm -hmm. Everyone is going. I believe. I firmly believe everyone's going to see God probably in the next year, or a lot sooner. I don't mean in a year, but um, and I'm just excited. I'm excited. Well, you know, there's no place to hide. No. Uh, Not when God has his flashlight out. <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 God's master it's plan fun. for uh, this planet and the people on it is not going to get is not going to be stopped. No. Period. Mm -mm. And uh, we're we're watching things unfold, and for those of us that have never let go of believing, this is fun to watch. Yeah. And it, and it's glorious. Glorious is right. And uh, you know, we ain't seen nothing yet. No. That we're about to see. No. Exactly. So, Let's get into we this. About to. March 3rd. Wow. March 3rd, springtime. This is March 3rd is very, mm, this is a great day. Yeah. Okay, our scripture verse is Romans chapter 10 and verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. There it is. <laughs> you know, mm. wow. They're being ignorant. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Ignorant is just you're not, you don't have the knowledge. Why don't you read the of, next verse? Okay. I mean, the paragraph. <laughs> uh, in this verse. Oh, hello. Hello. I guess we're just so, you know, hallelujah. In this verse. Ignorant doesn't mean stupid. It means to be unaware of something because of lack of knowledge. That's what I was just saying. If you're unaware, that, and this is Pastor Phillips, right? this is because we're one, you know? The two shall be made one. That's us, huh? Equally you're a Derber. Out. I'm a Derber. <laughs> That's right. If you're unaware that it's cold outside, <laughs> you could dress inappropriately and your lack of knowledge would have you unprotected from the cold. Likewise, when believers are unaware of Father God's righteousness, they're not fully protected from the cold world. No matter how hard they try to establish their own version of righteousness, righteous, wait a minute, where'd I go? No matter how hard they try to establish their own version of right standing, excuse me, with God, they remain unprotected. When men try to establish their own righteousness, they will either be full of religious works, do this and don't do that, or they will yield to a false liberty in which they can essentially do anything they want to do. Both are wrong. Praise God for true preachers of righteousness 
who know what righteousness is and how to convey it to God's people. When believers have been expo exposed to the true right standing tr teaching, then they must submit to it. Why would they have to submit to righteousness? Because it seems too good to be true. So we, as believers, have to submit to the goodness of God by faith. Boy, that's powerful right there. Mm -hmm. Awake to righteousness, be fully aware, and submit to it today. You know, that third paragraph. Um, mm. When That's the whole thing, because it seems too good to be true. When... And when, it is true. when an individual doesn't know this reality mm. of right standing, righteousness, he that knew no sin became sin, that we could become the righteousness of God in him. Automatically, if you are a person that believes in God of some sort, and uh, the God we're talking about is the God of heaven, you're going to want to be in right standing in front of them. Yeah. So if you don't know by faith that you have been made in right standing, you'll try to make yourself in right standing to appease your soul. And that's where all these religious do's and don'ts. But yeah. we're not talking about, we're not talking about uh, you know, do this uh, and don't do that as far as sin is concerned. Oh, thank you. I mean, that's that. Those, those, whether you're religious or whatever, is that's across the board. But when uh, a religion has a lot of penance, religion has a lot of formalities, religion has a lot of methods. They have a lot of of things that man has thought up that they say you have to do in order to be standing right in front of God. And uh, there are things that we are to do to please God. And there are things that we have to do to be made the righteousness of God as far as accepting Jesus as your personal Savior. Uh, but they, being ignorant... And again, ignorance is not stupid. That's right. They being ignorant about what righteousness really is, God's righteousness, then it's human nature. If you believe there's a God, that you want to be right in front of them. Yeah. Of so they go about to establish their own righteousness so yeah. that they can say, hey, you know, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. And, and Jesus, Jesus approached the Pharisees yeah. on this very subject. And uh, he told his disciples, who were a bunch of fishermen and tax collectors and so on and so forth, and they, they, weren't, they weren't schooled in uh, the higher uh, education that the Pharisees were. And he looks at them and he says, except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness which is of the Pharisees. And I imagine those fishermen looked at each other and said, and thinking, whoo, that's, that's, that's going to be a hard road to hold right yeah, there. right. Right? You understand um, a hard, hard road, road to hold? road to hold. <laughs> oh, Lord. Right? And so, uh, but what Jesus was saying was uh, you, you receive by faith when you're born again, you, you're made a new creation in Christ Jesus and you have already been made in right standing with God. Now, it's going to take discovering Scripture and being taught and using your faith to receive that reality, right? And that's why it says they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness which is of God. Why? It takes faith instead of works. Now, a faith without works is dead. See, 
Can I say something? It just was going through my mind when you when you were talking about, you know, they, they don't have the knowledge. And I was remembering, I don't know why, but the Lord brought this up in I know. I mean, I, I didn't just come up with this. I grew up in the Catholic Church, and as a little girl, way back, okay, I'm 78 now, 78. So when I was a little girl, I'm talking when I was six, five, six, seven, when I start realizing in the Catholic Church, it was a law. We could not eat meat on Fridays for whatever reason. I don't know. That was a man's law. It was the Pope. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing in Scripture that nothing, tells you. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Not. I haven't come across it. Anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I can remember one time as a, probably a teenager, I um, I was out shopping and I was in I think a five and dime store back then, and they had the best hot dogs. And I I had I don't know who I was with my friends. I was a teenager. I was a young kid, and I went and bit into this hot after I had the hot dog in my mouth and was chewing it, I realized it was Friday and I spit that thing out. Mm -hmm. I mean that's how much because I always wanted I always loved God, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I always wanted to do what was right mm -hmm. back then. And I, well I anyway, but I mean I can I was just thinking of that. And, and then I was thinking of my mom, she was the most precious woman. When it came to things of God that she thought, but that she learned. And and my mom, you know, the Pope, the Pope and Mary were just, you know, they were above everybody. And so the Pope decided, I don't know how old that was then. Well, I was in there pretty good too with the Pope yeah. and, and Mary. She loved me. She loved you. Well, she loved me, but I'm saying Yeah, but she she she, she expressed her love for me. <laughs> She, uh, the Pope said, he came up with, you're allowed to eat meat on Friday. Now she, anything the Pope said, went. But my mom reared up. She said, no way. She, I guess she thought God said, you don't eat meat. She said, we will not ever eat meat on Friday. I thought it was the other way around. What? When he said you couldn't eat meat. And she said, I don't care what the Pope says. He said you could eat it. Yeah, but I thought it was the other way around. That you couldn't? Yeah. No, are you kidding? For years, that, that, that was the law in the Catholic mm -hmm. Church. Well, that, that's a good example of, yeah. of how man comes up with these uh, rules. Yeah, and you're, and you're believing uh, that. Well, and you, how that affected your soul that yeah. you spit out that hot yes. dog. Yes, right? years later. Mm -hmm. You spit it out because you felt... In your soul, your emotions, was, you felt guilty. I felt I was sinning. Yeah. That was sin. Guilt. I mean, you had to go confess in confession that you ate meat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a sin. Mm -hmm. How crazy. Yeah. Well, but see, that's how, how much I loved God then. Well, the, the Pharisees, they, they had a form of godliness, you know, but until you understand the life of faith. Faith is well, what that's it. faith is what separates I'm talking about not faith as a denomination, not right. faith as just belief in God, but that you understand that it is a spiritual law that it talks about in Romans chapter three, the law of it faith. It overcomes the world. And it it overcomes. brings you in to the very image and likeness that we are made by God when we accepted Jesus as a personal savior. And, uh, you know, I come out of drugs, I come out of alcohol, I come out of crime, I come out of just a sinful life, m m more than most sinners come out of. And uh, if I never discovered faith, if I never discovered righteousness, then all that old guilty past would still be haunting me. You got it. Tormenting me. That's right. And so I would try mm -hmm. to please God and be right in front of him because this is 
this shame, this uh, guilt, this sin consciousness is just pulling me down. But praise be to God. God who is rich in mercy, right? And yeah, you honey, I think of me and the abortions. All of that. Oh, my God. Well, I, I was really blessed because God... But if I wasn't being directed by the Holy Spirit and, and knowing that, even though I thought it was for different reasons, when he led me to that, the day that he delivered me from the shame, the guilt, the mm -hmm. hurt, the pain, mm -hmm. all of it, horrendous what happens to a person when they have an abortion. And uh, if, if he didn't do that that day, I don't know that I would, I mean, I don't know how, how far I would have been able to walk in my righteousness. Well, righteousness, you know, we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago in our devotion, that righteousness delivers. It has delivering power. Yeah. And how it delivers, how it frees us is in the newness of life. When that, when that really dawns on you, when you awake yeah, Jesus. to, uh, and the blinders come off, and you accept, wait a minute, Yeah. I'm as righteous as Jesus, Shh. and you That's submit. Heavy. That's heavy. You submit to that. Mm -hmm. It takes you out of trying to be right, and now you're living, I am right. That doesn't mean you're going to do everything right. No. But God has made you right on the inside. Now, you, you've heard me say this for years. Righteousness is right standing. Righteousness is God's gift to us. Holiness is right living. living. It is our gift back to God. Righteousness yes. is what God did on the inside. Now he works that new creation on the inside, the fruits of our righteousness, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to come out, the fruit of the Spirit. You shall know them by their fruit. The fruit is reflected in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and that you're living right and the only way you can live out love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, <laughs> temperance is that you have to have that seed of righteousness in you, that incorruptible seed, and it only comes by being born again. again. So once you're born again, there is a, God goes to work on the inside of you to produce that fruit, mm -hmm. but if you're if you're under condemnation teaching, if you're under unworthiness teaching, then the love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, mm -hmm. faith, meekness, temperance cannot come forth like it needs to out of your the root of being made righteous. See, so what what will happen is you'll try religiously to operate in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Amen. See? And so now you, you, you'll you try to love. You'll try to have joy. You'll try to have peace. And and it's a fake. It's not, it's, it's, it's a religious, you're, you, you know you're supposed to be like that, but it's not coming out of your divine nature because you're still, in your mind is still in an old man mentality. Right. And to be carnally minded is death. There it is. So uh, you have to put on the new man and you have to be renewed in your mind. The spirit of to your be, mind. To, yes, right. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to be, be renovated in your spiritual mm -hmm. intellect. That's what it actually says in the Greek. Uh, but uh, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So to submit to that, to submit to that. Okay. Father God, you sent Jesus. He died for me. He died 
for my offenses. Mm -hmm. And he was raised again for my justification. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. And I ask you to forgive me and come into my heart and accept me. I accept you, accept me. And boom, you're born again. Boom. Now, now, as I start learning this new creation reality, that's why we have new creation classes. We have start understanding your new creation reality. I have to submit to that, to that righteousness. That's God's idea. That's his. That's his. It, this is all his idea. It's, 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 we could have never come up with this. It's his image. It's his likeness. It's his righteousness. Exactly. And you can, after you walk this out, after you walk with God for, I mean, we've been, what, decades walking with the Lord. Yeah. And after a while, you realize that there's, I mean, it, it, it's so, it's so, I remember, and I still to this day read a little book that Mama Denger gave us, uh, God Calling. And I, I remember years back thinking, something's wrong with this book, because all it tells you is, you know, be happy, you know, be joyful, laugh, you know, don't ever be sorrowful. I mean, and I'm thinking, that, that can't, but the more I saw it had scripture in it, and the more I studied the scripture, the more I got in the word, I realized that's, that's, you know something, God never, he said, he said to Adam not to eat of the, of the tree of the knowledge mm -hmm. of good and evil. Mm -hmm. See, he didn't want us to know the difference. He only wanted us to have good. Only. He didn't want us to know good and evil. He said, do not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge. He didn't say the tree of good and evil. He said of the knowledge. He didn't want us to have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then what's the devil say? He don't want you to be like him because he knows good and evil. I mean, why do we have to know good? We didn't have to, but I'll tell you, we're, I mean, evil, I'm sorry. I mean, that's powerful when you mm -hmm. think about it. God only has good. Mm -hmm. he, he don't have anything that's bad, mm -hmm. you know? Well, submission uh, is a word that a lot of people don't Ooh. like. First time I heard wives submit to their husbands, yeah. I was like, whoa, <laughs> where that came from? Submission is sub. Whenever you see sub, it means below, underneath. Subway, it's underneath. Submarine, Under. subfloor. And so submission mm -hmm. is, Under. there's a mission going on. That's and it. you're you getting underneath under. that thing. Well, God's got a mission of uh, filling his kingdom up for eternity with people. His children, yes. right? And his idea, let us make man in our there image. There you go. There now, you go. we just got to submit to that. That's it. We don't know how to do that. He that knew no sin became sin. <laughs> he tells you how to do it. Though. That we could be made the righteous That's God in Christ. Exactly. Now, I got to submit to that. I'm not going to go about and try to establish my own righteousness. No, there's already one that's already been established. I have to submit to that. And when I submit to that, I start walking and living in the benefits of that. A new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become um, new. Yeah. And on this wonderful Wednesday, that is a powerful truth. Just listen, 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 believer. This is powerful. Just submit. Just, just quit, quit fighting this righteousness revelation. If you, if, if you, if you might be watching and you're not really a member of Faith Victory Church and you, you've been watching this and you're, you're listening to this righteousness teaching and, and you're kind of like standoffish, you know, ah, you know, I, but you, but yet we're teaching out the Word of God. Submit to it. That's it. When you submit to it, and you accept it as reality, you will see your whole mannerisms, how you start living 
uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be, I ain't talking about pride, but there's, there's a confident in him. Yeah. The Bible says it's in him that we live and move and have our being. See? And so I would just encourage you on this wonderful Wednesday to submit that you are in right standing with Almighty God. Our prayer line there is at the bottom of the screen. We have licensed prayer ministers standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week to help you in whatever circumstance you may be uh, facing in your life. Prayer starts things and prayer ends things. Thank you for spending this half hour together with us. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there, there is, is power. power. Be a blessing. The Power of Faith programs are available on YouTube 24-7. So you can watch from anywhere at any time. Search for Power of Faith on YouTube or go to youtube.com forward slash power of faith. Subscribe and click the bell to make sure you're notified whenever new episodes are posted. If you missed the episode or you just want to go back and watch it over and over again, the Power of Faith YouTube channel is there for you.